Okay, we're going to talk about something here that can be a little tricky, and it can be tricky because it's commonly confused, especially if we talk about pathophysiology, with a much more common disorder, and that disorder is multiple myeloma. So this is Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. That's a mouthful. I'm just going to call it WM, okay? If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the I button on the upper right-hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos, and I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely subscribe to my channel. You'll get notifications every time I put a new video up. Okay, so what is WM? It is a proliferation of B cells. That sounds like multiple myeloma. However, these B cells make IgM, whereas with multiple myeloma, it makes IgG. And that is going to be responsible for some of the differences here. This is very rare, um, but it is primarily a disease of the elderly. You can see not very many cases are diagnosed per year. Uh, there is an increased incidence in people who have a family history of a blood cell dyscrasia, including multiple myeloma, but that's so common it's difficult. Um, and then an increased incidence in Ashkenazi juice. There may be a genetic component here. Uh, the chief symptoms include platelet-type bleeding um, and symptoms related to hyperviscosity. Um, so that's kind of a unique duo. Uh, so platelet-type bleeding, gums, nosebleeds, typically these patients aren't of age to have uh, uh, menstrual cycles, so you're probably not going to see a patient with menorrhagia here. This is usually older people. Um, and then these symptoms related to hyperviscosity, headaches, visual changes, diplopia, we really notice it in the CNS first. Monoclonal IgM often has autoimmune properties, um, so this can also uh, result in myelin destruction causing a peripheral neuropathy. Okay, so we talked about these symptoms, a couple other ones. They, these antibodies can infiltrate organs. Um, you can get a lymphadenopathy, and like I said, the peripheral neuropathy. That's pretty common. Um, so labs. So this is going to look very similar to multiple myeloma. So you can get a normocytic anemia, um, you can get a thrombocytopenia, um, and then you can get this rouleau formation, and that is commonly seen in multiple myeloma. So it looks very similar to multiple myeloma so far. Um, the difference is with multiple myeloma, you're a little less likely to get that uh, hyperviscosity syndrome. Uh, but you're not always going to see it in Waldenstrom either, so you can't rely on that. Um, now, the diagnosis here is SPEP. Uh, we would go for that with multiple myeloma too, so that's really nice. You've got this patient who's presenting um, with uh, a, um, a syndrome, and then you get uh, a peripheral smear, and you see a Rouleau formation. You, know, you think multiple myeloma. It could be WM, but we don't know. Um, so we're going to get an SPEP, and that's really nice because it's the same best next step uh, in either or. And uh, the most accurate test, of course, is going to be a bone marrow biopsy. Biopsies are usually the most accurate test for a lot of things. Okay, so this is what an SPEP would look like. This is more step one stuff, uh, but basically what this is is we're looking at proteins. These are heavier proteins down here, so I'll say heavy, and these are smaller proteins, lighter proteins over here. So obviously albumin's a huge protein, that's gonna be on the left, and then we got our smaller immunoglobulins um, on the right. Now IgM is a little bit heavier than IgG, um, so where we would see that M spike that we see in multiple myeloma, we would actually see that a little bit further to the left, closer to this beta um, curve, um, we, we would see it further to the left. That is probably not going to get tested, but what you do need to know is WM is an IgM syndrome, multiple myeloma is IgG, so we would see it over here. This is an ancient note of mine that I included on my original video. Um, I believe I took this note in med school, so this is pretty old. Okay, um, so we talked about how this is diagnosed. SPEP will show that spike between the beta and gamma regions, um, whereas multiple myeloma will be in the gamma region. Bone marrow biopsy will show a proliferation of lymphoplasmocytic cells. It is necessary for diagnosis, but you do not need to know how to read it. Even for step one, you're unlikely to get asked about that. Workup, like we talked about, and this is what we see. 
Further management, bone marrow biopsy, and that's what we see here. Look for the pan B markers, um, and uh, that will help you. If they're asymptomatic, you don't need to do anything, just monitor them. If they are symptomatic, we wanna get all those antibodies out, so we do a plasmapheresis. Um, chemotherapeutics are available, including immunotherapy, but you don't need to know that for your exam, and then to make sure you put in a referral to Hemonc. And then this is a comparison between Waldenstrom and multiple myeloma. As you can see, the treatment varies substantially. Look for the differences on the SPEP. Um, that's going to be really important. Another thing that's going to help you is that Waldenstrom's, because it's got those big honking IgMs, uh, it's going to be more likely to cause the hyperviscosity syndrome. Um, so look for that. Whereas with multiple myeloma, you have your crab symptoms. And if you're unfamiliar with that, please go and watch my multiple myeloma video, which I will be updating soon because the treatment has changed. It'll be the third time I've updated that video. So oncology is an MFB because it's constantly changing. Uh, but uh, fortunately, when it comes to these cancers, often you do not need to know the treatment. Um, there are exceptions, especially with the leukemias and lymphomas. Uh, but uh, I put everything here for completion's sake.